and welcome to day 36 of our RV10 build. This was our first full day working on the tail cone. Before we get started, I wanted to say a couple quick things. First, congratulations to my YouTube t-shirt contest winners, Joshua Coots and Mr. Steve 169. Congrats, guys. Uh, if any of you wanted to get your own Why Buy Planes When You Can Build Them t-shirts, you can get those on my website at plainlady.com. Also, a big thank you to Jonathan C. and Carlo C. Thank you, gentlemen, for filling out the referral form for Vans. I really do appreciate that. If any of you are planning to purchase or have recently purchased an empennage kit for any of the RV models and you found my videos to be helpful, please consider going to plainlady.com referral and downloading the referral form and returning it to Vans Aircraft. Vans will send me $100 as a thank you, and it's a really great way for you to help support my channel that doesn't cost you anything extra. Let's get started with the build here. Um, I'm going to start really quick by saying that there is a substantial mistake that we made at the end. If you have been following along on Instagram, I've posted some pictures recently. We have the tail cone actually back out in the garage right now currently, and I've spent a couple days trying to remedy the situation after we've talked to, uh, to vans out there to their tech support. Um, I'm going to get into it when we actually get to that footage though, so you can see what it is that I'm talking about. So we're going to just start at the beginning and we'll make our way down to the mistake at the end. This was really fun actually. This, this, <laughs> on one of the first steps we did this day, which was on, let's see, 10-3 and it was step one. Oh my gosh. I love this so much, not because really of the task that you're doing, but because of where you read about what to do in the directions. It's on 5-14. It's 5.13.1 straightening thick aluminum parts. It has a great image to go along with it to help describe what you're doing, but the picture reminds me of something out of an old uh, Batman comic strip. So I just, I don't know, I find it really funny. It's got the little wang on there and everything. It's hilarious. But so you have you have the um, the horizontal stabilizer attachment bars. They're very thick, and as it describes in the book, they're kind of warped because of how the punching process works. And so you're trying to flatten them back out and get them as flat as possible. And you are going to be using a vise to help hold it, and then you're going to be whacking at it with like a rubber mallet to try and straighten it out. The first thing is it says to make sure you know that you have a pad advice. So we put some wood blocks in there just to help make sure to not like not have the teeth on the vise, like leave any sort of um, dents or marks on it. It protects the, the pieces there for those attachment bars. So we just put two pieces of two by four little ones on either side to hold it and keep it from uh, getting marred or mashed up. And then you preload it. And so you're having to push on the bar um, in the direction you're trying to bend it. And you want to exert some force on it there before you whack it with the rubber mallet. I'm not going to try and get into like the physics of it or anything, but the, the point is like, if you just whack it, it's just going to kind of reverberate. It's not going to actually bend. You have to do that preloading part there and push on it and then whack at it to try and actually get it to change its shape. If you just sit there and whack at it without pushing on it, it's not going to, it's not going to actually change how it bends. And it talks about that you can go and just sort of move along slowly, like sliding the bar further and further in and hitting it across different parts. But then I'd set it on the table so I could see where the curvature still was standing out. And then I would try to mark with my fingers when I picked it up, like where the, the apex was kind of the bend that I was working with to line up that apex of the bend along the, the edge of the wood blocks that I had holding the attachment brackets and the vise so that that's where I was trying to change the bend the most, was right there at the apex. So hopefully that makes sense, but um, one thing I would suggest is wearing gloves. I did end up putting on the leather gloves because since you're sitting there and you're holding it, um, to preload it and then whacking at it, you know, there is a little bit of some vibration and it did feel a lot better when I had the, uh, the leather gloves on um, instead of just holding it with my bare hands. There was another tool that we used for the first time, um, the Unibit. 
And this is uh, to try to help you step up a small hole into a substantially larger hole. And uh, it has a bunch of different steps on it that go from a variety of sizes. I think the one that we have from Cleveland Tool that we got with our kit from them goes from one quarter inch all the way up to three quarter inches. So you can use it to enlarge um, one of those smaller holes into any one of these larger sizes. And the one thing I will point out with this, it's, it's fairly self-explanatory how to use it, but um, this drill bit does not fit in our Pan Am drill that we got from Cleveland Tool. It, the shank is just a little bit too big, too fat, too wide. It will not fit in there. So we have to use our just our regular old plug-in drill um, to get it to fit to use it. So that's that's one. Th if you don't have like a regular drill, you will need one to to use this and just make sure that it can accommodate the the larger shank on the uni bit. Something you definitely should do though when you're using this uni bit is to make sure to secure it to the table, like clamp it down. Because um, going through, as it's chewing through the aluminum and enlarging the hole, it can sometimes, the drill sometimes feels like it's gonna jump a little bit and just, you don't want it moving or spinning or anything. So just make sure to clamp it down really good uh, whenever you're gonna use it. So in step three, it's talking about putting the F1011A bulkhead stiffener on the back of the F1011 bulkhead, and you're supposed to center it and place it just right so that you can then match drill the holes from the web of the um, that bulkhead into the bulkhead stiffener. And so it talks about you need to have the stiffener the edge of the flange of the stiffener needs to be a quarter inch above the holes. It doesn't explicitly say how to do this in the book, but basically the, the easiest thing was we just went and measured a quarter inch up from two of the holes that were on there on the bulkhead and then just drew a line with the permanent marker to give us an uh, indication then of when we're trying to line it up of where it needed to go. Having the line was just kind of nice because you could line up the whole edge and know that you had it level and it was centered and, and had it at the right spot. Easy enough to figure out, but just, just putting it out there in case anybody was interested uh, how we went about and did that. Something to keep in mind for the future, it doesn't come up on this day with these instructions that we were doing, but when you're in the tail cone, there is a service bulletin that you need to be aware of and it is for the, I think it's the, here we go, the F1012D, which is the elevator stop. And so that service bulletin, 18-03-30, that's further ahead uh, in 10-13, but just to kind of start putting it there in your brain to make sure that you're aware as you get to, whenever you get to that, just keep in mind there is a bulletin that you need to apply in the tail cone. So just make sure to keep that in mind and be aware of it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of deburring because you have all these different bulkhead pieces and this was before we had the uh, learned the trick about doing the deburring tip using that 3M wheel and cutting it down. So you can see it took a lot of time. I actually cut out quite a bit of it because I didn't think there was any reason for you guys to just sit there watching us deburring all of the spaces between the flanges, but it took a lot of time sitting there with those little tiny, uh, little tiny files trying to get in there and deburr everything. This is a hundred percent one of the places where that deburring tool, uh, that little deburring tip would have been so much easier. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it above and link it below, but there are just so many little flanges um, along the each of the bulkheads because of the curvature. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of deburring. All right, so now we're gonna get to the mess up. Okay. So up to this point, everything in the inventory, all of the aluminum parts that we received have been the exact dimensions that they were listed in the inventory of parts. So this isn't like with wood where a two by four is not actually two inches by four inches. Every single aluminum piece that we've gotten at this point has been exactly the dimensions that were listed in the, uh, in the inventory until today. 
the eight foot J channels that you are going to use in steps two and three of 10-5 are not exactly eight feet long. I think they're actually off by half an inch. They're half an inch short, if I'm not mistaken. And there were quite a few, six to be specific, that we went to cut down. And when you're, when you're looking at some of these lengths of pieces, so you had two that were 90 and 11 16 inches, two that were 90 and 3 quarter inches, uh, and another two that were 90 and 3 quarter inches. Um, instead of trying to measure from zero on one end all the way out to 90 and three quarters, we sat down, just did the quick little math and said, okay, if we're starting at the other end, we're only having to measure in, you know, five and a quarter inches. But you can see where the problem comes in if it's not actually eight feet long. We figured it out actually once we got to working on the wings and it was one of the first steps in the wings where you have to um, match drill holes into some um, other J channel stiffeners along the wing spar. Knowing how expensive those wing spars are, I went ahead and measured from you know zero at one end all the way out. And when I went and measured it, um, I told Tyler, I was like, these measurements aren't right. We didn't, we didn't measure this right. It's off by like half an inch. And, you know, Tyler's like, I don't know how that's possible. I went and did the math. This is how much it should be. And that's when we went and discovered that the eight foot uh, J channels were not actually eight feet. So the good news is we caught it while working on the, uh, on the, the wings there. But when suddenly realizing that, and remembering that we had these eight foot J channels in the tail cone, went inside and looked. Sure enough, they were about half an inch short. And what we didn't look at or think about for some reason at the time is we should have seen it because the J channel, um, they did not tuck in underneath the flange of the final bulkhead there at the back of the tail cone. None of the six of them. They tucked in like just a little bit behind it, but they didn't actually go all the way underneath it like they were supposed to on six. And of course, by the time now that we're realizing it with the wing kit, um, we'd already finished the tail cone, everything was inside. So called Vans, got on the phone with the, the builder support there, and I'm thinking in my head, surely this is something where the pieces were cut wrong or they received them wrong from a vendor or something, um, because everything else that we'd received up to this point had been the exact precise dimensions that were listed there in the inventory. And had a fun little conversation there with the builder support, everything very polite. Um, it was, however, recommended to me that perhaps we should invest in a tape measure, which I did have, but it was also pointed out to them that everything else has been exactly the right size. So it wasn't exactly at the first thing to think of that we need to confirm all the sizes when everything else has been exactly precise. So came to a nice mutual agreement that perhaps there were some <laughs> mistakes made by both of us, got some new J channels shipped to us to try to fix the situation. And I don't want to go into all of that right now because I don't want to make this video super duper long and crazy. And for those of you who are just getting started, you know, this will serve as a warning and you won't make this mistake. So it won't apply to you how we're fixing it. If any of you are suddenly running out to your tail cones right now to see if you made the same oopsie, uh, I'm just going to do another video kind of going over what we've been working on the past couple days. So I'm going to jump out of order a little bit here and do a, a, like a more current update to show how we are fixing it after talking with uh, vans about what we need to do. And, and if you, if you did make a similar mistake like us and your J channels do not go all the way underneath the, um, flanges there on that bulkhead, uh, you do need to fix it. That is what we were told, uh, by vans when we asked them about it, that I believe they said on the RV 14, they had seen some cracking around that location where other people perhaps had made a similar mistake, I think, where they hadn't gotten their stiffeners all the way there. We were told to fix it. So we are fixing it right now. 
but it is fixable. So that's the good news is it is fixable. Uh, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> it's taking time away from moving on with the build. So just measure it right the first time and keep in mind that the, the eight foot J channels are not exactly eight feet. So whenever you get to those anywhere in the build, again, like in the, the wing spars and everything up there, uh, just remember that they're not the exact eight feet. But besides that, everything else went really well. Uh, it was really fun to start to see some, again, whenever the bigger pieces come out and starting to see each of those bigger and bigger bulkheads that we were putting together and looking at, um, it, was, it was fun starting to imagine it in our heads. And with the exception of just the J channel issue, which of course we didn't realize that day, <laughs> everything else went really great and it was, uh, Kind of fun to try out the that little weighing technique for straightening out um, those attachment brackets and uh, and then trying out the uni bit for the first time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more videos like these and to follow along as we build our RV tent.